All right. So I got a request for some restorative yoga. And I don't have that flat bolster because I used to have two and people keep stealing them. I don't know where they go to. So as you see, I'm going to attempt to do some restorative yoga with a giant stuffed animal. Let's do cat cows. Inhale to a cow lift. I like to tuck my toes under. You don't have to. And then exhale, cat tuck. I think I'm doing some long breaths here. Good for me. Nope. Inhale, cow lift. Not that long. Exhale, cat tuck. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. As with all yoga poses, it's all right to wiggle in your cat cows. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. Come to the tabletop. We're going to do them to the side. Inhale to a C shape, taking your right shoulder towards your right hip. And then exhale back across your body, backwards C shape. Yeah, nice. Inhale to a C shape. It's so nice. It's so beautiful. This is all we're doing. And it's so good. Exhale, backwards C shape. Good. And then a cow lift again. Inhale to a cow lift. And exhale back to your child's pose. Um, okay, and then inhale to a tabletop, lowering down to a half plank. You're going to engage your core here and your arms. And then we're going to inhale, opening the heart to a cobra. And exhale, push back to child's pose. You're going to have to drag your arms back with you probably. Yeah, this is a modified sun salute. Let's do it again. Inhale up. I like to take my hands forward a little bit so they're under my shoulders. And then lower down. That's arm work, a little bit of core work. Inhale, opening into your cobra. And then exhale, back to child's pose. Nice. Again, inhale to your tabletop, lowering down. Inhale up, cobra. Exhale back, child's pose. So good. So restorative yoga is more of a philosophy than a series of poses. It is a series of poses and they, they tend to involve props. You're still in child's pose. But um, the philosophy is, here is where we're not working. Nobody told me that, I just figured it out. Here's where we're not working. Like the one time in our lives when we're not working, except when we're asleep. Here is where we're not working. And that's sort of an active thing. All right, come to um, a puppy. You're going to pick your hips up. Put your forehead on the ground and stretch your arms out. Puppy is so good. You can wiggle here if you want to. I have a cat here. Arrived too late for the cat tuck demonstration. If you live with pets, you know they do, they do yoga all the time. A lot of these poses are very well named. You're still in your uh, puppy pose, breathing here. All right, and then dolphin. So you're on your forearms already. Just straighten your legs. Dolphin is a form of downward dog. And if you're like, wait a second, I came here for the restorative yoga. Downward, uh, dolphin is hard. It is a hard pose. It's a shoulder builder. And any form of down dog is going to be an ask for your cardio. So if you're not into it, just keep your knees on the ground. Being puppy, it's fine. That said, sometimes it's nice to add a little. Yang. All right, come up onto your knees and your toes behind you. Grab your hands behind you. We're going to open our heart. That's it. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm opening my heart towards the sky. That's it. That's it. You can come back all the way.
if you want to, but like I hope you're studying what I'm doing here and noticing that it's not necessary to. Take your hands behind your head if you want to and feel that opening across your neck into your shoulders. It's so good. I really believe the bulk of camel is in the heart. Come down and sit on your on your heels doing the same kind of the same pose basically. But you see it's just a giant heart opener. That's what it is. It, it seems like it's about the lumbar spine, but it's not. Okay. Okay, so then we're going to do the same heart opener from a seated position. All I'm doing is rearranging my legs so that I'm in a seated position. I tried them out long and then I decided I wanted it to be cobbler. It really doesn't matter what your legs are doing. What we're doing is we're trying to find that same heart putting our hands behind us, rolling our shoulder blades together, really getting some opening across the heart. This is real. This is big. This is big. Where we are right now with this crisis, a lot of us are collapsing right here in the fourth chakra. You need to like open and breathe, open and breathe and honor yourself. And what I was saying about yoga in the restorative philosophy is you're doing it by not doing anything. You're doing it by letting the earth do it for you. Restorative yoga is about gravity. You're arranging your bones in such a way that gravity is getting in there and opening your heart, okay? So if it, that doesn't feel like what you're actually doing, move some bones around until you can feel your heart kind of like falling open. That's what we're going for here. Restorative yoga is about what you don't do. All right, come down on your forearms. We're gonna find that same heart opener. I'm straightening my legs. I'm rolling my shoulder blades back and down the back and I'm opening the heart. That is just, that's an action right there. That's an action. You can keep your head up or down, it doesn't matter. I think I tried both and decided I want my head up. Your neck is gonna tell you different things on different days, but the main thing is just to feel the heart here. All right, and then I'm coming to an upward table. You can do this if you're in the mood. As I said, sometimes it's nice to put a little energy in when we're working with so much passivity. Take your hips down. Oh, here comes my prop. So if you have a bolster, particularly a flat bolster, use that. Don't use a giant stuffed animal. That said, what we're doing here is if you have a long bolster, you're gonna be tucking it lengthwise into your sacrum and having it come out long behind you, rolling your heart open over that long bolster, your head is also going to be on it. If you've got just like a giant pillow like I do, then just put it in such a way that it's really inviting your heart to fall open on top of it. It's not so different than what we were doing a second ago, leaning on our arms. This is just a 100% passive version of the same thing. If you don't have a bolster or a giant stuffed animal, you can just do these poses just with nothing. It's also fine. In your restorative yoga, you are trying to feel the communication between gravity and the cells of your body. Stuff is moving. All right, come onto your left forearm and stretch your legs long. They're stacked on top of each other. And that's it. You can take your right arm forward and up over your ear if you want to. You can fall over like I did and maybe like stack your legs differently. The legs part is not important here. There is a little bit of core work that's going to keep you from falling over. But the main thing that we're looking for is a side bend. Look for that side bend. Something like really nice stretching under your arm and down into your waist, wherever, wherever you feel it. And then put both of your hands on your giant stuffed animal. Now, if I had a bolster, at this point I would turn it sideways across the mat, horizontally across the mat, because what I'm trying to do is really prop open the heart. I'm like putting it under my chest. This has now become a back mend. You're, you're laying your body down on your prop so that it feels like you're, so that you're feeling a little back bend. In my case, my thing was really smushy, so it wasn't like a huge back bend. That's why those bolsters are good. They really are good. I might put, I'll put a link in the comments to, in the description to like, that bolster if you want to buy it because it's so good.
Turn your head the other direction. You'll know you're doing restorative yoga right when you feel great. When you just feel like tension just kind of leaving your body and going down into the ground. That's what we're looking for. Okay, and then come up onto your hands and see if you want like an actual high cobra a little bit, maybe, just to wiggle it out. And then let's do some cat cows. Inhaling to a cow lift. Exhale, cat tug. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. All right, take your bolster underneath you. And again, if you have a real one, it's gonna be horizontal. Inhale your whatever arm that is, maybe right. And then come down, thread it underneath your left end. Um, here we are twisting. It's a figure four needling kind of twist. I am kind of experimenting with what I want that upper arm to do. There is no right answer. The upper arm is just supposed to really feel like it's in a nice place for your twist. It can be on the ground. It can be in the air. You can tuck it behind you. I'm trying to feel an opening in your middle back, in the back of your ribs. All right, and then inhale that arm that's underneath you all the way back up. Come back down to tabletop and inhale to a cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. Yeah, other arm. Oh, let's call that lift. Thread, thread it underneath you and come down onto, like you're on the side of your face and your shoulder on this thing, you should feel very nurtured by this pose. Look for that place. And then come back up, that arm that's underneath you comes all the way back up. And I bet you thought that I forgot about the side bend on the other side, because I totally did, but then I remembered. So come on to your whatever elbow that is that you didn't already do, maybe right. Taking your other arm forward and up over your ear. We're looking for the side body, yes. Yes, it should feel good, it should feel good. That's really good. All right, come out of that. Come down onto your back. Hug your knees into your body. Now, this is an example of restorative yoga. A lot of the normal poses that we do in yoga are restorative. It's a philosophy, like I told you. I mean, in this case, you're doing very little, but you're having an extreme experience of gravity and of your body's connection to the earth is real. And you're just taking some time to feel it. All right, put your hips on the, I mean, your feet on the ground and pick up your hips, bridge pose. Adding just a little bit of energy, just a little bit. I like to take my arms behind me and bridge, but you can also have your arms underneath you or whatever. I'm coming up onto my toes. Let's just bring some calf in there. You can do that if you want. All right, you ready? Take your bolster. This would be horizontal for your bolster people. 
underneath your sacrum, hug your knees into your body again. We were just here a second ago. And now you feel the difference. You, now you feel why we use bolsters. A, because they're great. But B, because they change the angle of the pose. This is the same pose we were doing just a second ago, but now we have an increased angle. And so it is nice. It's snugglier. It's different. It's different on the digestive system, second and third chakra. And it's different on the low back. It's just different. Make sure it's good. Always. Yeah, then take your arms to the insides of the thighs and the outsides of the shins. Here's happy baby. This is the pose when I teach beginners. Uh, every once in a while, I will go sub a class down at the, um, like our local Y. And there will occasionally be begin like actual beginners in there. And this is the pose that blows their mind. A, because of how it feels. But I think mostly because of how it looks. I mean, it's ridiculous. Who does this? What grown-up does this? Very few grown-ups do this, and that's why so many grown-ups are totally unhealthy. I'm going to come out and say it. It's true. All right. Hug your, uh, I don't know, let's call it left knee into your body. Take your right leg towards the sky. Kind of thought I... And then lower it down. This is going to be a little bit of core work. Lower it down, and you're on your bolster, and you're like, where is the ground? Eventually, you'll get to the ground. It's going to feel like a nice psoas stretch. And then pick it back up. And we're doing this really gently. This is, um, that's your psoas picking up your leg and putting it down. And your core is also involved in this. Lower it down gently. And pick it up. If this is stressing you out, you, out, you don't have to do it. Lower it down. And pick it back up. And then put your uh, left foot on your right knee. Thread your hands through for figure four. This is um, a hip opener and it's cool. It's real nice with that bolster there. It's a really nice, nice angle. If you want to, you can bend your knee. I like it better with the knee bent. Or here I'm demonstrating how a lot of athletes do this pose. They do it like this and they have to hold on to their pants because they are not very flexible. If you want to do it like that, that's fine. It just means you're an athlete. All right, let's do the other side. Hug your whatever knee that is, maybe right, and lower your left leg until it maybe just touches the ground and then bring it back up. And we're going to do it a few times, lower it down. You can do it with me or at your own pace. Pick it up. Lower it down. Pick it up. And then put your other foot on your other uh, right foot on your left thigh and thread your hands through for figure four. When you do it with your legs straight, it does look like a four and you see why it's called that. But what it is is a hip opener for the, uh, the hip on the bent leg. You're going to feel that. Don't feel anything in your knee, just your hip. You can bend that top leg if you like it better like that. feet on the ground, pick up your hips, move your giant stuffed animal out of the way. Let's do a bridge again, yes. And let your bridge feel like it is a completion of the passive stretching that we just did. Put your hips on the ground and then 
put one foot on either edge of the mat, let your knees go out to the left. You can grab your opposite elbows above you on the ground, along the ground if you want to. Or um, I took an online class with my friend Sherry, and she did this thing where we're extending it, like we're moving the arms in the same direction that the legs are going. Like you're making a banana shape with your body on the ground. It's going to give you a side bend. See if you can find a side bend around like your armpit and down into your ribs. It's a really wonderful psoas stretch for the hips and the middle body. But um, if you do that banana thing, then you're also maybe adding some side bend in. Banana thing is a technical yoga term. Pick up your knees and let them go the other way. And then if you want to like scoot your arms sort of in the same direction that your knees are going, that might feel good. It's optional. All right, straighten your legs. And do any last thing you need to do before Shavasana, it is time. Now listen, in our culture, the people that we are, Shavasana is the hardest part of a yoga class. For a lot of us, this is the hard part. Like some people love it, some people are just talented at it. They come in and they're like, can we just do Shavasana? I get that request a lot, but um, for a lot of us, we're ready to get going at this point. But challenge yourself, okay? Don't get up. You're in Shavasana. I'm just coming to check on to see if my camera still has battery. Don't look at me. You're in Shavasana. Yeah. Lay down and just be feeling the earth underneath you. And you're like, I'm in a room. How am I supposed to feel the earth? And I'm like, that's a dumb question. Because... You can feel the earth. Of course you can. Doesn't matter if you're like 20 stories up, you can feel it. Um, I forgot to say that you have a bolster, maybe, or a giant stuffed animal. It's really nice to put it under your knees. That feels good. And I'll be in your Shavasana. Wiggle everything you got and stretch everything you got just a little bit on the ground. Then roll onto your side. 
Often when I do Shavasana, this rolling onto the side part is the part where I remember that I forgot to relax the whole time. Hopefully you're not like that. But if you are, relax right now. And then when you're ready, come on up to seated. Take your hands to your forehead. I love you. Take your hands to your heart. Dedicate my practice to you. Thank you for practicing yoga with me. Namaste.